Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martin O'Sullivan. I'm a surgeon based in Cork, working in between breast check, CUH, and the Bon Secours Hospital. The topic this afternoon is HRT and cancer. The menopause is a condition that will affect 100% of women during their lifetime. The average age of, of menopause in Ireland is currently 51 or maybe 52 years old. It affects women to different degrees. Some women sail through the menopause without any difficulty. Some women have a big deterioration in terms of their quality of life with difficult menopause symptoms. And the majority of women are somewhere in the middle. Now, for many years, various treatments have been used with different degrees of success to address menopause symptoms, but there is no question or doubt but that there is one highly effective treatment, and that is replacement of the hormone estrogen. Indeed, this has been with us for almost 100 years at this stage. This is Edward Doisy, who's credited with the discovery of a form of estrogen in 1929 in St. Louis in Missouri. However, it was really in the 1960s that HRT took off in the United States, particularly following the publication of a book called Feminine Forever by Robert Wilson. About a decade later, doctors were noticing that these women were certainly benefiting from HRT in, a in terms of menopause symptoms, but unfortunately, there was an increased risk of cancer of the womb. For that reason, a second hormone called progesterone was added to HRT. So that combination of estrogen to help the menopause symptoms and progesterone to protect the lining of the womb is termed combined HRT. And that is the commonest form of HRT that we use nowadays. Only if women have had a prior hysterectomy or removal of their womb can they use what's called estrogen-only HRT. And the distinction between the two is very important, as I'll demonstrate later on during the discussion. During the 1980s and 1990s, HRT was associated with a decreased risk of heart disease. It was supposed to be good for bone density, and its usage became extremely common. In fact, by 1992, Perimarin, which was the main form of HRT used in the United States, was the best-selling prescription drug in the United States, and its sales exceeded $1 billion in 1997. However, this dropped off very dramatically just five years later, following the publication of a study called the Women's Health Initiative in 2002. This study claimed that HRT was associated with an increased risk of breast cancer, but it was also bad for your heart as it caused heart disease, and it was also associated with clots. And even to this day, lots of women don't use HRT because of this study, although I do get a sense in the past 18 to 24 months that more women are going on HRT than before. So overall, when you take a look at HRT and cancer risk, it might slightly increase the risk of breast cancer and perhaps slightly ovarian cancer and cancer of the womb or endometrial cancer as it's called. Cancer of the ovary and womb are fairly uncommon overall. And for that reason, I'm gonna focus on breast cancer for the rest of this discussion. Now, breast cancer is extremely common. One in eight women will develop the disease during their lifetime. It's a disease that will affect the rich and famous as much as the ordinary person on the street. It gets a huge amount of publicity in tabloid media, in more serious media outlets, and indeed in social media in recent times. The good news is that things are improving the whole time in terms of treatments, but lots of challenges remain. In the fields of surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, hormones to block estrogen, neurotherapies such as monoclonal antibodies and immunotherapy, diagnosis, and indeed in prevention. And I will be focusing on prevention for the rest of this presentation. Now, let's take a look at the risk factors for breast cancer. Well, the main risk factor is being female. Men do develop breast cancer, but male breast cancer accounts for less than 1% of breast cancers overall. The next big risk factor is age. The older you are, the higher your risk of developing breast cancer. Now, many women are very concerned about genetics or family history, but in fact, this is not a big factor overall. Indeed, less than 5% of breast cancers are associated with a significant genetic abnormality in the family. Now, if you consider these three factors, being female and aging, along with your family history, you've no control over them. 
However, there are some risk factors that we do have control over, and that's where HRT becomes potentially important. So what is the risk of breast cancer with HRT? Well, let's take a woman in her 50s. She's had a negative mammogram with breast check. She's thinking about going on HRT and she goes into her GP and asks, what is my risk of breast cancer? The next slide is the most important slide that I'm presenting today. And this refers to British data, but I'm sure it applies to Irish women just as well. So if you take a thousand women in their 50s, 23 of them will develop breast cancer over the next five years. Now for comparison purposes, let's take another thousand women. They're on combined HRT. And in fact, 27 of them will develop a breast cancer over the next five years. So there's an extra four cases of breast cancer for every 1,000 women taking combined HRT. That's the estrogen and progesterone. So that's a less than 1% risk. Now, let's look at another, another 1,000 women. They've all had a prior hysterectomy. So they're taking estrogen only HRT. And in fact, there will be four fewer cases of breast cancer in this group. The pill is a risk factor for breast cancer. Alcohol is a risk factor, at least five extra cases. And in fact, some people feel this figure should be higher. Smoking is a risk factor, but look at the effect of being overweight. This will more than double your risk of developing breast cancer. And unfortunately for these women who are overweight, there are several studies that demonstrate that their survival rates from breast cancer are worse compared to women who are not overweight. Finally, exercise is hugely beneficial. Now I'm not talking about pumping weights in the gym for three or four hours a day, just a brisk walk for about two and a half hours a week will significantly reduce the risk of breast cancer, seven fewer cases per thousand. So yes, combined HRT slightly increases the risk of breast cancer, but any discussion on HRT needs to occur in the context of other lifestyle factors that we can modify. And in particular, alcohol and weight gain increases the risk of breast cancer, whereas regular exercise greatly reduces the risk. Now, let's address a few specific questions people may have. Can you take HRT if you have a family history of breast cancer? Well, the short answer is yes. As mentioned, there's a slight increased risk of breast cancer. And do remember that some family histories are highly significant, whereas the vast majority are probably not. What about vaginal HRT? Well, this is perfectly safe for virtually all women. There are a few formulations of vaginal HRT available. They all have a very low dose and virtually no absorption into the general system. The only women who should probably avoid this form of HRT are women who are taking drugs called the aromatase inhibitors. These are used to treat breast cancer and sometimes cancer of the womb. What about women who are on HRT and they're unfortunate enough to be diagnosed with breast cancer? Well, most breast cancer doctors would advise them to discontinue the HRT. This is for two reasons. There is an increased risk of recurrence of the cancer if they remain on HRT. And secondly, there's an increased risk of forming a new cancer, for example, in the opposite breast, if they stay on HRT. What about non-hormonal therapies? Well, these may certainly have a role for some women, but as a broad rule, women need to be careful. They haven't been properly evaluated in scientific studies, unlike regular medications. On the other hand, therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, or indeed there are other medications that your GP would be, would be aware of, can be perfectly safe in terms of breast cancer risk and effective in terms of treating menopausal symptoms. Now, in a presentation like this, you tend to focus on the negative sides of HRT, but for the majority of women, HRT can be hugely beneficial in terms of menopausal symptoms. It is associated with a decreased risk of heart disease. It's good for your bone density health with decreased rates of osteoporosis and indeed fractures. And in some women, it may actually reduce the risk of dementia. So I think it's important to be balanced when you're giving a presentation like this. So just to summarize, combined HRT, that is estrogen and progesterone, will slightly increase the risk of breast cancer, but that risk is fairly small. Now, low risk, of course, is not the same as no risk. And remember that risk is very individual. What's an acceptable risk for one woman could be totally unacceptable for the next woman. 
It does appear that estrogen only HRT and vaginal HRT are safe for the vast majority of women. The general advice is to avoid HRT if you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. And of course, don't forget lifestyle factors, which is a tendency that we have in modern society. Alcohol and weight gain will increase the risk of breast cancer, whereas regular exercise will greatly reduce the risk. Finally, as a broad rule, women should examine their breasts once a month. The only symptom that we tend to worry about is a discreet breast lump. Pain is very common, but it is not a worrisome symptom, and it is not a symptom to suggest breast cancer. Like all these issues, if you have any concerns, the advice would be to discuss these with your GP. And in particular for women aged between 50 and 69, I would strongly advise women to register with Breast Check. It offers a free mammogram every two years, and it is a truly excellent service. Thank you very much.